How do you make a location work? Some locations do all the work for you. Great natural light, great textures and colors, but sometimes you don't have those benefits. You get a spot that's more plain, white walls without a lot of depth and so on. So today we are going to work with a DP friend of mine to take that more challenging location and make it cinematic. That DP is Daniel Ruth. He has a great catalog of work ranging from feature films to short films and commercial work. And the location is my house. I love my house, but it's not ideal for film. So the first thing we did when we arrived was to set up our camera. We were looking for a spot in the house that gave us the most depth and had some natural light that we could tap into. And that camera is the Canon C70. Canon partnered with us for this episode and sent me this one to use for this. And the C70 is an RF mount, which I love, but for the first setup, we opted to go with these Canon cinema lenses. Again, this is an RF mount. So we are using our EF to EOS R adapter, which gives us an extra stop of light, which again, I love. Effectively making a lens like our 24 through 105 L a 2.8 lens when initially it's a four. And the camera will do that conversion and give you the change right here on the display, like showing us this 0.9 with the cinema lenses now that we have the mount on. Another big perk there is that you're getting a full frame field of view with this mount. The C70 is a 35 millimeter sensor, but with the adapter, you are getting that full frame view. We also have a 24 through 70 RF lens that we're gonna be shifting to for our next setup. But with our camera up, our house lights on and nothing set, this is what we have. And it looks absolutely horrible, just vomit inducing bad. So the first thing that we're going to do here is shut off all the lights and go to a stop that will give us a more shallow depth of field. And now we have this just natural light from the windows and that separation from the background, thanks to our depth of field. To get to that stop, we're going to need to use our internal NDs here, which as I've said before, if a camera doesn't have internal NDs now, I just don't want it. Then to get things moving in a direction, Daniel set up one light outside the window to the side of Justin. I generally like to start with the key since that's the main light source for your subject. So I started with the, with the key light here. We have a 1200D outside, which is going through a bleached muslin. And then there's a single layer of diffusion between the light and the window to help break it up even more. It's called double breaking. And one thing I really wanted to do is bring the wall down behind him. It was so bright that yeah. I wanted to bring it down. And so instead of trying to slow this window down, what we did is we brought him up and then we were able to compensate in camera to bring these windows down relative to the key light. And we got rid of this slither of light here that was on the edge of the window, which does a ton to clean it up. And mm -hmm. I do love this little slit being left open. Yeah. I like that that kind of, it lets us feel the world outside. It doesn't feel closed in. Plenty to do still, but already just a massive improvement by shutting off the lights and pretty much just enhancing the natural. Yeah, so we added this um, stop sign bounce here to help wrap this key around, fill in this side of his face a bit and give him just a really subtle eye light. It still doesn't feel quite enough, so we may add a small source to help lift that up even a little bit more. We turned this practical on back here just to add another layer behind his shoulder there. We added a six by solid to his right frame left, which uh, brings down the, his fill side of his face in exposure. Uh, we also added a tube light behind his shoulder, his right shoulder there, to give him a little bit of an edge on the back side of his head. I like to do this a lot on faces where we have the key light here, and as it wraps around, it gets darker, and then at the very, very back side here, just add a little kiss. At that point, we had it pretty close and it became about doing those final brush strokes, like getting this shadow off the back wall that was coming from another window from the other room. And Daniel added a small aperture light to get a little more power out of our bounce. So in all, we have the key light kicking in through the window from over here, and that's going through two stages of diffusion. And that key is also feeding our bounce to bring up some of the shadows on Justin's face, which we also have that aperture MC kicking into that bounce to get a little more from it. Then we have some negative fill over here to get more contrast on the shadow side of his face and a tube light behind him as a kicker. And that's it for the lighting on the actor. Everything else we did was just about controlling the environment, which one of my favorite elements to give atmosphere to an environment is haze. And we can see how much of a difference we are getting in the feel of the shot without the haze versus with the haze. And we can go from very heavy haze to less so. And both of these are reducing the contrast a bit, so we could adjust that in the grade to compensate and you're still getting a nice sense of depth 
depth and atmosphere, especially around bright sources. Another thing that is helping us out is the overall dynamic range of the camera. We have 16 plus stops of total dynamic range here, so we are able to get a lot in there. This scene is pretty controlled, but we do have those bright windows, and it does help a lot when you're shooting run and gun, especially when outside with natural light. We're also shooting this in log to get that full range and in raw too, since the C70 does do raw internally right to the SD card. Your options here are raw ST, raw LT, XF AVC, and some flavors of MP4. Raw and XF AVC are data hungry, so it's nice to have that MP4 option in there for quick small things. But a great perk to shooting raw is having the ability to adjust settings after the fact. So in Premiere, I can jump over to the clip settings and adjust my color temp, tint, exposure, color space, and gamma. The one thing to keep in mind when shooting raw though is that you can't use the internal image stabilization, which is one of my favorite things about this camera. You can use it with XF ABC though, and that internal image stabilization is a bit of a game changer for me. We have a lot of manual EF lenses, including my anamorphic lenses, which I never use since we need to stay locked down to avoid that jitter you get with lenses that don't have the stabilization. But now we can kick on that internal IS and I can use these lenses as we would with a lens that does have IS. But again, we did want to shoot raw and we're on the cinema lenses here that do not have image stabilization. So we are getting a lot of jitter going handheld, which we wanted to go handheld to see about more interesting angles while staying with this exact same lighting setup. So for this, we shifted over to our RF lenses that do have that image stabilization on the lens and we were good to go. And these RF lenses are really great. The RF mount is one that they designed so that they could do things that they couldn't with mounts like EF, like this third ring on the lens, which is programmable. So you could set it to control something like your ISO and have that extra bit of fast control. But with this setup wrapped, we moved to our second. And for this one, we wanted a Fincher thriller vibe. So Daniel found this angle here, looking down the hall toward the stairs. So we have these three areas giving us that depth and room to play. But like before, off the bat with all the lights on, this is looking really terrible. So again, the first thing to do is cut off all the lights to see what we have. Now we have a very dark scene, which is what we want, but not this dark. So for our first light, Daniel threw this one at the top of the stairs, which is hitting a bounce just above the frame line. And when we kick it on here, you can see it gives some shape to the stairs and silhouettes Justin, which I guess now is a good time to give a PSA that with these shots being so dark, it's best to watch in 4K to avoid a lot of that YouTube compression. PSA over. The second light was a panel off to the side, now giving some shape to our actor, and another on the other side, which is that same light that we use as our key in our first setup. After that, Daniel grabbed a few small MC lights set to warmer colors to give the foreground some separation and interest. And all of these are just set on counters, and one is even bouncing off a piece of paper, because why not? And finally, because I love practicals, we gave Justin a flashlight and we had our shot. And this looks good as is, but it also feels a bit digital to me. So once again, we turn to the almighty haze to bless us. Now we have the same perks as our last shot with the haze, but you also have the beam from the flashlight catching on the haze, giving us this great dynamic light. And as he moves through the space, the flashlight connects with different surfaces to give us this evolving quality of light as well. But I'd say my favorite aspect of this shot is that essentially we're doing day for night. It's in the middle of the day and the windows are giving us ambience to fill the space, which we can then shift our camera settings to darken and arrive at this great night shot in the middle of the day, which it totally plays as long as we don't don't show a window. And again, since we're on the RF lens, we can go handheld and explore the shots further. Moving shots like these when running with no crew, the autofocus does come in handy and the autofocus here on this camera is solid. You can jump in to adjust your settings to shift your speed of that focus and you have some great options of behavior for the autofocus like the face only function. With this, you're getting that face detection which does a great job, but if your actor looks away or leaves frame, the autofocus doesn't go hunting, it stays locked. But those are our two setups taking a boring environment and giving it some life through the shaping of light. And again, all shot on our new C70 that can 
Canon sent to us. And although Canon partnered with us for this episode, this is honestly one of the best cameras under $20,000 that I've used in a very long time. And I don't need to say that, I just love shooting on this thing. You have all the perks we already talked about. The addition of Canon's great built-in audio, excellent color that grades beautifully, solid slow motion, and of course that internal image stabilization that allows me to use things like my anamorphic lenses handheld now, which this camera also can de-squeeze that anamorphic footage right in camera for you to view. The C70 has been out for a while now, but if you are looking for an upgrade right now, I would absolutely recommend this one. So check that out in the notes below. You'll also find some links for our DP Daniel, so show him some love. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.